everybody, my name's Dylan and welcome to the fortnightly Star Wars show where we're going to discuss anything that's been happening in Star Wars news. Star Wars book, canon, comics, offspring, TV products, uh, Rebels, Clone Wars coming back in a feature, it's not happening but, you know, stuff. And we're going to discuss Star Wars news here so we don't, and by we I mean me, don't bring it up in any other video products I want to do, we're going to vote a sole Star Wars show to Star Wars. It's going to have a name, it's not going to be called Star Wars Show because somehow the people that make Star Wars over at Lucasfilm, uh, they got the name the Star Wars Show for their show. It's a good show, you should watch it, you should check it out, it's on YouTube. Let's get some news. She, Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine himself, Ian McDermott, recently gave an interview on his YouTube channel, which I will be linking down in the below, where he talks about how he really enjoyed Force Awakens and how he's looking forward to Rogue One. And then he makes this feel, he's like, well, I'm not in Rogue One, even though a lot of us had been thinking that it was a high possibility to have the Emperor turn up in the movie. But he says he's not. Now, this doesn't, of course, say that he isn't. He could be lying. There could just be a simple picture of him in the background. Uh, you can see his, like, image on a TV somewhere, you know, being like, I'm not neo Nazi like I'm not. That kind of thing could be happening, but he says he's not involved in it. But do we think Emperor Palpatine is in the movie? We kind of do, because there's that scene in the first trailer where uh, we see the figure with the hood on, he's walking towards a tank, we don't know who's in the tank, we don't know who's got the figure on, but there's two royal guards, two Palpatine guards, side by side here, what are they doing there? They usually only hang around with their master, though. Maybe the guards are in the room, Palpatine's in the back office, doing some paperwork, you know, it's hard being a big Sith ruler, but of course a pol politician ain't gonna do some paperwork every now and then. I mean, I want to trust you in, but... And then Mark Hamill shaved, and the whole world freaked out. Mark Hamill shaves his beard, uploads a video of it to Twitter, says something along the lines of, first time I've shaved since, like, March last year or something like that, when he had to grow the beard back for filming of Episode 8. He shaves it off after he's finished filming Episode 8. Now, as there's one have to grow this back till Episode 9, everyone starts freaking out. Oh, no, Mark, you've spoiled the movie. You've spoiled that Luke doesn't die. First off, who really thought Luke's gonna die in this movie? We're gonna we're gonna spend the entirety of Force Awakens looking for Luke. Then we're gonna have him not saying anything and being in it for like ten seconds. Um, the whole premise of Force Awakens, the whole premise of that movie, we're, we're looking for Luke Trevorrow. Um, the third movie, sorry, he's already said in an interview like six months ago or something like that. He's like, yeah, my movie's gonna like have a more to do with like Leia and Luke and their relationship. And do I think Luke's gonna die in episode eight? No. Could he die? Yes. And could what Mark Hamill said being a lie? No. He could come back as a force ghost. He could be in episode nine as the flashback. There's, there's many ways that, we're, we're in the Star Wars universe here, guys. Someone saying that they, they could be like, this week in canon. This week in canon, Han Solo 3 released. And uh, the issue, if you haven't been enjoying the Han Solo comics, I believe we're going to do five. It's just like a five issue new series. We're up to three, there's only two more to go. But there's still a lot to be done. If you didn't know, last time an issue, we left off. Everyone been captured. Empire's like, no, we don't really like you doing this race thing. Like, you're having too much fun. It's not very uh, good for us because we like you to not have fun and kind of just work for us for free and like, you know, maybe go die in a hole, or join the Empire. And they're like, we're going to shut down this race. Start this issue, they're there, everyone's lined up, people come in, I don't know, I just assume they're like the head of the, the planet we're on, like the head of the races or something, and they're basically like, yo, um, you know where you guys need to refuel? Like your four next fueling restations you need to stop at to get more fuel in by? Yo, they're run by us. You let us do this race, or no more fuel. And this guy who's, you know, trying to act like he's a big tough guy, but he's probably just like a grunt's like, yeah, okay, I suppose we can do the race, and you will hopefully all die anyway. So then we're back into the race, everyone, and of course, on board the Millennium Falcon is the one of, one of three or four uh, people that Han um, was, of course, charged with picking up from Leo Garner, uh, informants 
of hers that are in trouble. And the guy reveals a big secret. We're going to slight spoilers. Uh, he says that, you know, one of the people, basically, that he's going to be picking up is a mole uh, for the, and has gave them all away. So, Han's like, well, it could be you. And he's like, well, you know, not really. I mean, I'm the one telling you this, so whatever. But basically, one of the next people that you're going to be picking up on one of these planets is going to try and kill us all. So then we're going to go into the next two issues. we got Han dealing with the race, which there's some really cool parts of in this issue. Han dealing the race, which he doesn't even need to get into, but he does because he's Han Solo and he's cool. Um, so we're going to get into Han trying to win the race, race probably, and then we've got him trying to pick up all these other people, uh, informants and stuff like that, and one of them is swung back the other way and is probably going to try and kill everyone else on the ship. So we've got some espionage happening, we've got some action, we've got too fast, too freaking solo happening. Issue 3, really enjoyed it, cool moment at the end, new character introduced, says something towards Chewie that I'm like, well, I do like a bit of backstory for Chewie because we don't get that much. And I'm looking forward to issue 4, obviously. So is Han Solo, episode 3. It's two thumbs up. And for the last story today, I'm throwing up the big old possible spoiler warning. Spoiler warning, maybe, could be necessary for a spoiler warning. For episode 8, coming from Reddit, of course it's a rumour because this is like unsubstantiated. There's no way to believe this other than like, sounds legit, why would someone lie about this? Yeah, I could totally believe it because other fact things. Spoiler warning, someone at Celebration said they were in line at the store called um, Saving Yoda. They're like, one, they overheard one of the guys being like, so which Yoda is the one like we're getting our picture taken with? And I was like, oh, it's Yoda number two. And then he's just like offhandedly says, yeah, uh, we got called in to do some Yoda on episode eight. And they're like using Yoda puppet number eight for that one. And then Rom was like, what? Episode eight, I am. Mm kind of makes sense because there was reports that Frank Oz was in uh, London or somewhere like that like a while back uh, when I was filming episode 8 and stuff like that um, and there was his little bit of voiceover part used in episode 7 in the scene where Ray has the whole touch the lightsaber oh, ah, help me that whole scene there's a Yoda line in there there's an Obi-Wan line there's all these cool things so uh, she's now meeting up with Luke would it make sense to have Yoda in episode 8 yeah, to makes total sense. As we never really delved much into the whole, how, can f how often can like Force Ghosts appear to you? Is it like a hard thing for like Force Ghosts to appear to you? Um, we've had Yoda appear twice in Rebels. He like sh um, he sh showed himself what he's. So you get the first time Yoda shows up as a Force Ghost at the end of Return of Jedi. He's like, oh hey I'm there. He's like, okay that's a thing. Um, you get the, the couple moments in Rebels. We've had Qui-Gon show himself to Yoda. Um, so, we've ne but we've never really seen like, oh, it can only happen when someone's in like a dire need. Or can like, Luke literally has a setup and like in so, in so in touch with the Force, he can be like, yo Yoda, what up? Yo, Obi-Wan, what up? Yo, Daddy, what up? And then she's like, oh my God, is that Darth Vader? Do you know like, there's someone out there like obsessed with him and then everyone's like, oh no, it's Hayden Christensen. We're going a bit far off topic. We're going to 100% confirm this. Confirm. So that's all we got for you this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, if you've got anything you need to say about the topics down below, any thoughts or opinions on ev any of them, uh, Emperor Palpatine in Rogue One, Mark Hamill in Episode 9, and, spoiler again, is Yoda in Episode 8? Any of those stories, plus what do you think about Han Solo issue number three? Are you looking forward to some more Han Solo? Don't forget to give the video a like just down there, and you can hit the subscribe button too to make sure that you check out the next video. And until that one, see you later.